Hi everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do a reviewing guide on the latest uh, Alto Astro product which is the 60mm uh, finder scope setup. Now, as you can remember from my last video guide as I did the product review on the SynScan 2 which is a auto guider I mentioned uh, about uh, using this uh, standalone guider on a 50mm finder scope or guide scope. Now, through my findings, the actual SIM guider itself did actually work really well, but it is uh, limited to about a magnitude of 3 to 4 valued stars. But for the dim stars, I found it was a bit tricky, particularly where there were some uh, deep sky objects that I wanted to image and I happened to just uh, try to struggle to find a guide star. Now the 50mm guide scope did work and it worked quite well, but because of the limited aperture you can only go so far with the exposure limit on this uh, standalone guider. So I wanted a setup a bigger setup that I wanted to use a uh, bigger aperture and I come across the Alto Astro 60mm finder scope. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look actually on the product itself, uh, show you, uh, give you our specifications uh, and what it involves in the package and so later on on the video I'm also going to do a little bit of a modding uh, to uh, the actual finder scope itself so you can use it for other things as well. So what we're doing now is going to take a closer look on the uh, finder scope itself. So here's a package from Alto Astro. I purchased this item directly through uh, Nick and he's a very helpful chap and he got me this uh, finder scope and Costs around about £129. Now, it might put a lot of people off with the price, but don't let that concern you because what the one thing that you buy from Alto Astro is very good, well engineered quality, and I mean very good quality uh, optical uh, devices and telescopes. So, what you're paying is what you get. Now, the reason why I got the 60mm finder scope is that I wanted a dual purpose finder scope. So, one, I wanted a really accurate uh, finder scope, and, and secondly, I needed a, 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 a guide scope set up as well. Uh, later on, I'll also show you the third option you can do with this finder scope, and believe me, you will be impressed on its performance. Now, I do like how Alto Astro uh, packaged their items. Again, it is a no frills box. You're not gonna get look nice fancy labeling. But the one thing I do like about this box is a solid cardboard box, and inside you have a foam insert with the complete package. Now again, this has cost me around 129 pounds that I ordered from Nick and it came in rather quickly and I had no problems. What's inside the box is that what you'll get is you'll get a really good uh, uh, you get a set of screws uh, also you get the actual bracket the, the bracket itself is highly machined and also uh, being highly machined, CNC machined it is ionized, very lightweight, it's aluminium and it's very solidly built. This will take a 60mm uh, guide scope, no problems. And uh, I do like how they do the, the dovetail as well, the dovetail mechanism. So basically this uh, dovetail can fit directly onto any finder bracket. If you're ones with the sky watcher brackets and all that, you can fit that to your existing uh, finder scope bracket. So I do like how they've uh, made this, it's well built. Okay, it also comes with a spare clamping bracket as well and the good thing is again it's aluminium, ionized, highly good quality machine uh, parts 
Oh, even the screws are solidly built and I do like how they put a, uh, a mounting bracket where you can mount it, uh, mount your screws or your metric six screws in either position. So I do like that. Now the good thing about this setup is that this package also includes a 23mm eyepiece. Now this is not just a standard eyepiece, this is actually a reticle eyepiece. In other words, there's a crosshair that you can see here. And being 23mm, it will give you around about 10 magnification when you combine this onto the guide scope. It's very good quality and the glass, the clear optical glass is, is brilliant. But the good thing is I wanted a really good reticle finder and if you get this kit you'll get everything complete. It comes with the actual red uh, torch itself, uh, the actual red reticle. Okay and what that will do, this, this will attach to the side of the eyepiece. So when you screw it in here, as you can see, very good, highly machined aluminium construction, very good quality, and you can tell by the build, it's just precision made. And as you can see here, you can, if you undo, if you click the actual button here, you can adjust it at different brightness. Now, it is there, but uh, the reticle is, is not is not supposed to be too bright now the reason why it's not supposed to be too bright is that you don't want to overly expose the reticle and then dim out all the stars you're trying to view it's just the right kind of brightness now I can't I, I can't seem to adjust it quite clearly but there is a reticle in there with the being not too bright is you don't want to blow out all the stars when you're trying to view but it's highly machined it's well constructed and it's it's solid build and it's built to last and again I wanted good optics but also I have a good aiming device now if you refer that to my finder scopes I also highlight what a reticle eyepiece is all about and uh, again if you refer to that video to that video guide I highlight finder scopes now I'm not going to go too much in depth to describe what is a finder scope but a finder scope is basically just an aiming telescope that you point your main telescope towards a target you want to view that's basically that's all it is there's nothing too complex about it now we're going to push that to one side and we're actually going to show you the actual scope itself so what we'll do we'll move out all the stuff out of the box move the box out of the way uh, again solid build aluminium construction straight away very good finish as I open up the 60 millimeter aperture it's around about 225 uh, millimeters in vertical length and it's a very fast optics uh, Alto Astro fine scope I do like the aluminium construction I uh, I do like it has the inch and a quarter uh, adaption which I can fit my SYNCS guider in there like so okay and I can attach it like that okay I also like how it has a, a nil fo focusing ring in other words you can focus the image up and down like so again it's solid built there's hardly any play in that. Now, okay, it's, it's, uh, the actual nil setup is brilliant for use of a finder scope method so you can focus the image without sliding down the tube to get it focused. However, the main problem is that it might introduce a bit of flexure in the actual guide scope. Now it is not recommended uh, to use the existing nil setup like that. Now if you do want to use it for guide scope then you can use it but you might find that your guiding could be affected by the flexure in the nil uh, screw. So it's not accurate enough. If you want to use it as a guide scope you need to have a steel, a solid 
steel or solid aluminium tube so that you can be able to focus it and also eliminate a lot of the flexure because you don't want flexure when you're guiding now you might get away with, with this setup but however there is an attachment that you can buy off Alto Astro and they sell them for about £40 and again it's a solid tube setup which has fine threads which you can then adjust the focus train of your guide camera and with that set up alone if you click on the link there I, I'll put you to directly to the uh, website for you to order the solid tube attachment to this existing 60mm fine scope and again you can adjust the fine screws once they're adjusted and your stars are focused that's it you just leave it well alone that's all you need to do but apart from that you can get away with it it's that it is well machined and and again if you start getting guide uh, problems then start investing on that uh, setup alone and we're going to show you the uh, how it attaches uh, the eyepiece we're going to slot it in there now basically what that does is you can now uh, set it up and, and uh, get ready for using it as a finder uh, scope but the quality is unbelievable. Now, with this setup, uh, a lot of people are a bit scared of scope rings. Now, there's a there's a bit of a myth that scope rings are not adequate for the job for using it as a guide scope. Now, if someone says if someone says that to me. I would tell him he's a bone liar. Now, the reasons why uh, scope rings are not accurately made is because they're not they are not made from highly machined parts. A lot of the scope rings that you get are rather plasticky or really cheap materials. Now, some people say scope rings give out a bit of flexure. It, if you're going to use it as a guide scope and people prefer to use like a clamshell variety to hold the guide scope in place and so forth but one thing I have found that, that if a guide scope is well made you're not going to get any flexure or hardly at all now again a lot of the guide scope rings are usually made uh, from really good material but one thing you do find is that some sort of reason if you have a look on some of the websites you get a guide scope ring on the guide scope and everything else can be well made but then they totally replace them with plastic screws I don't know why they cho chose to use plastic screws it's no wonder why a lot of people avoid guide scope rings now the guide scope rings are not bad it's just because they use plastic nylon screws you go, you're gonna get flexure regardless now the good thing about uh, Nick he made his screws out of solid steel solid stainless steel screws with nylon tips alright the nylon tips help to not mark the tube now the setup is a bit difficult at first to try and take it all apart so again we're going to take the eyepiece out we're going to take the inch and a quarter adapter out that all the connections of a clamping screw inside and it has a, a sleeve as well so you don't mow uh, your eyepieces or your attachments and with that is again you slide it across like so as you can see it's already solidly built and you just carefully just put the screws in and already the screws are robust just by screwing them in okay and again trying to twist them these are good screws and they're not budging 
which just shows you, but Alto Astro, you can be very, extremely safe because their optics are very good. And to be honest with you, I've not had any problems with their products. And already, with this setup alone, I reckon I can do some good guiding with this to a, an acceptable level. But as I'm aware, is that if you're going to use it for serious guiding for longer exposures than 10 minutes or more, then start investing a solid tube connection for this guy scope. But again, this is brilliant as a finder scope method, there's no problems with that. And the setup there alone clips in like so. I'm going to show you now uh, the reticle through the eyepiece through this finder scope and I'm going to show you the optical quality on the, on the actual finder scope itself. This finder scope is mounted on to my AZ3 mount. Uh, it's not adequate but it's enough to keep the, uh, the finder scope steady so I can show you how good the, the optics are. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look through the eyepiece. I've, uh, it's very tricky to try and mount this through the uh, the camera, and there's obviously there's loads of uh, there's loads of field of view there, so quite a wide field of view, and you can just see the the reticle. So I'm actually quite impressed with that. Again, there's hardly any chromatic aberration, which tells me that's really good optics for a short focus refractor. Because basically that's what it is. And uh, I'm actually quite impressed with that. That's really good uh, optical quality. There's hardly any uh, CA effect on there. And uh, that's brilliant. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap the lens cap over the fine scope. And we're going to show you how good the reticle is. So we're going to turn on the reticle. So now I'm going to show you the uh, the quality of the uh, illumination of the uh, crosshair itself. Uh, I have to up the exposure on the camera. And as you can see there, fantastic, look at that. That's really good. So that's a very good reticle there. And that's what you need. You need uh, something that's rather accurate because that makes all the difference. For your making your finder scope work properly so again it's on full whack as well so it's just the right amount of brightness and you can dim it up and down using the screw on the side right and you can actually adjust the brightness so and that's on maximum so again on maximum you don't want it to blow it uh, out of proportion to so it dims out all the stars in the background so you want it just to illuminate just enough so that you can see the reticle and see the, the faint stars. So that's just to show you uh, how that works through that setup. Now if we just up the gain on my camera, you can see already, look at the coatings, highly multi-coated coatings, which is really good and that's what you want. Because you again, if you want to capture faint stars, then you need one good aperture but also you need good coatings to capture uh, a lot of light and these will help to eliminate a lot of internal reflections and believe it or not there's actually baffles inside the, uh, the finder scope itself there's a few baffles in there which help to make the images a lot more crisper if you're trying to find or locate a target you don't want internal inflections within the, uh, the finder scope but again Look at the setup there, it looks really solid built. It's quite light, it's quite light as well. It weighs around about a kilogram at, at the most. Alright, so it's not too heavy. It's a very fast scope, so it will be a, an F3.75. So because of the fast optics that it that's in tell, I think you could use this scope because the optics are so good I reckon I could use this as a imaging scope 
So again, when you buy this setup, you can pay for you can pay for this finoscope and attach it to any telescope you want. The one bad thing I didn't particularly like about this setup is that as well as having uh, a dovetail bracket like so, I would like to have seen the Alto Astro fit a mounting screws like a metric six uh, countersunk screws with the package because not all telescopes have uh, screws and some people struggle to find screws. So Alto Astro should really have put in some screws but there could be another reason to that. They could mean that they try to uh, cut down a bit of the costs. Because again, mach highly machined parts cost a lot of money to manufacture. So again, they're trying to keep the costs down. Now the good thing is that don't get confused. This is just a finder scope method. There is another uh, finder scope that you can get and it is a 60 millimeter variant. Now you can you can get the other variant, which is a an Alta Astro 60 mm finder scope, but it's not a straight through rotating helical focuser. Now that's the one thing bad thing about this one is that as you rotate uh, the actual focuser itself, it twists. On certain aspects, is because they twist, you're moving the actual eyepiece. So again. If you're fitting a guide scope camera on there, you're going to uh, move the camera and then twist the, the cable as well in the process, it's particularly if you're trying to focus. But don't let that concern you, is that the other model has a helical focuser that doesn't move. So basically it keeps your camera or your eyepiece in one place as you twist it but that is 169 pounds this is 129 pounds so the price difference is quite ham it's quite a lot now alternatively if you do like the setup itself you can actually buy the finder scope itself without the eyepiece so if you take the eyepiece out you can actually buy this setup as it is there with the dovetail for about £99. So again, Alto Astro are really focused on a variety of people's budget. They focus on people's budget uh, within their products. So again, if you want a non helical focuser or you want this, they will cater for your needs and they will make products to suit your needs. So again, that's why I do like about Alto Astro products is one, they're very good quality products and two, is they will try to make products designed for astronomers okay and enthusiasts so again and if you want to upgrade to further on and you want to upgrade this system to a a 60 millimeter guide scope again it's not recommended you use the actual nil knob itself uh, use the by the the attachment which is the, uh, the which is a solid tube aluminium construction avoid the flexure and you'll be able to attach your camera or your guide camera on there without any problems but again from the look of this I reckon I can get away with guiding with this setup alone but again I need to try it out to see for myself if it's more than adequate and they do other models of a, a finder scope or guide scope they do a 50mm package which is the Starwave 50mm guide scope and you can buy that with the non helical uh, twist focuser and also the GP cam mono guide camera for around about £235 complete with scope rings and the dovetail clamps and everything included as one package so again you can get a 50mm model which is slightly smaller than this and be able to use a, a GP camera as, it's, as it is well, but also it's not just that you can also get it with the eyepiece reticle as well the price depends on how much you want to pay uh, and again if you just want the actual tube itself for about £65 
and also there is a big brother to the 60mm you can buy an 80mm guide scope or finder scope set up for £199 so again there are different variants so you got a 50mm all the way up to an 80mm finder scope or guide scope set up and again you can just buy the tube itself or you can buy the complete setup like this with a reticle eyepiece you know there's loads of options and within budget for a lot of people but again I got this set up because I think this is the, the better deal and the good thing is that this setup alone is that you can modify it and upgrade it later on if you want to go for guide scope method which then leads to this now over the years I do like modifying stuff and I do like to uh, make astral products perform better and a lot of these astral products that I do like using are usually budget style within budget for most people and this what I have just come conclusion are that I've noticed something a loophole because a lot of people don't want to spend a lot of money on astral equipment and the good thing about this uh, I got this package is I've noticed something that I found that's quite easy to do but the one thing I've noticed that I, I have found is that you can actually use this finder scope as an imaging setup and believe it or not you can use this setup quite easy I know it is an acromat and believe me you will get some false colour uh, through this finder scope but don't let that concern you you can take fantastic pictures through this guide scope or finder scope so don't let this put you off about uh, the the false colour within the images if you're concerned about it then don't use it but i am just like to share my ideas to put it across to beginners or newcomers that you can use this tiny 60mm as a, an imaging scope because of the fast optics of f3.75 you can take 30 second exposures and capture the data com and if you compare it to you know, a, 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 so like for example a three minute or four minute exposure you can ca capture the data within 30 maybe a minute it's that fast the optics on this finder scope and the good thing is it'd be very wide field so it make it more than adequate as a wide field scope and that's what what's, that's what led me to believe that as, as I've noticed on closer inspection is you can actually take off the new the nil adaption now the reason why you take off this adaption is you want to bring uh, the the actual finder scope into focus and you can actually attach a DSLR camera like this and I'm going to show you how to do it so again one thing I have noticed is I did actually attach this camera onto this finder scope and again it's so easy to do you take off the dust cap and again if you refer to my last video guide on how to attach a DSLR camera to a telescope again using a T-ring and then using a T adapter or inch and a quarter nose piece doesn't matter either way okay you can fit either way and basically if I take the inch and a quarter adaption off like so I can attach it directly my camera onto this finder scope I now have a really fast wide field imaging telescope or a telephoto lens you can use it for bird watching so 
But the main problem is though, is that the nail knob, as you twist it, that's the bad thing. As you twist it, it just rotates the camera. So, and also another thing is I found that this doesn't go into focus very well. And that's when I've noticed something else. If I take the camera off, if you look closely on the inspection, there are three tiny flathead screws. They're made out of plastic, and all you do is you loosen these screws. You loosen them off uh, just enough so that you can twist the actual nail knob setup like so. You take it off like so. You can see, just see the one of the baffles at the bottom end, as you can see. Now, it's a very fine thread, the M52, but one thing I did notice is if you click on a website or telescope service and you happen to have or you do have if you're owner of a Skywatcher telescope particularly with a reflector like your typical 200p's or your 8 inch quattros and all that you usually have an attachment like this now this is a Skywatcher 2 inch adapter for Crayford focuses. Now you can click on the link to find uh, through telescope service that actual part number and how much it costs. And uh, this is the uh, the attachment that you're after. And again, you can get this from telescope service. If you visit uh, this website here, this uh, web address, it will take you directly to this the attachment. And as you can see, it's designed to uh, connect it to your 200p or your uh, 8 inch quattro or 10 inch skyline or anything like that. This is what this attachment will do is bring your coma corrector or any other uh, eyepiece or camera connections into focus. It has to be this type of focuser. So now we're going to take a closer look from there. It costs around about 16 euros to purchase, but if you do actually have one spare lying around, like I do, then you can actually use this adaption to fit. Now, as you can, as you can see here, this won't fit. That's why you need this adapter. Now, the one thing you do need to do is, on the Alto Astro, the threads are a lot more blunt. In other words, it is the same thread size, but the actual thread pitch is different. Now, on the Skywatcher, they're a lot more sharper, they stick out a lot more. So what you have to do, for you to make this item, this adapter, fit onto the guide scope itself, you're going to need a, a file. And what you have to do is use the file, file off a little bit off the thread evenly across the, uh, the thread itself. Now you might, you need to be very careful because you don't want to file off too much, but you want to file, file across evenly. You clamp it on a vise and just file bit by bit and once you think that you've filed enough, you then attach it onto your finder scope. If it starts to trap or nick or try and you're trying to force it in, you don't want to force it in. You just keep filing the edge along the air so all the threads are slightly flattened. Once they're flattened, if you take a look, closer look, off slightly flattened and again you just got to do it bit by bit steadily evenly file across each part of this adapter again if you try to fit this item 
onto your telescope it's not going to fit okay so again if you're quite willing to pay 16 euros to sacrifice this fitment then be it if you've already got one of these installed and you don't know you've got no use for it now this is the best time to do it and once you've got it filed up on there like so you then again test the test the finder scope and just screw it in and also if it's a bit rough in certain places again file it off but you don't want to have you don't want to take too much then it's you start to get a bit of free play you don't want a bit of free play once you're happy you can then use a bit of bicycle lithium grease and again you just lubricate the parts of your thread just a smidgen of grease and you just screw it on and the whole idea is you can adjust this is basically acts like a focusing mechanism so again you want it free to rotate with hardly any free play and able to rotate the actual adapter back and forth now the good thing is because it's uh, it's got 12 millimeter of travel on there okay believe it or not attaching a canon 1100d or a 600d or any other canon camera you have as you can see it's a good fit you clamp the screws together like so and then again if you focus on the object you can then just unscrew like so once you focus there you go and believe me it works and if I show you now through my pictures I've taken using this setup so you can actually use this device as a cheap uh, telephoto lens and being a fast f uh, 3.75 you can get some amazing results through this little setup So now we've got the camera and we've got the adapter fitted. I focus the adapter, okay, like so. But this is halfway through the thread. And I focus it even further by moving the nose piece slightly back to about five to about ten mil uh, back focus. So that is now focus. Now as you can see you can show it just shows you that the camera needs to be focused a lot more further in the tube itself so you've got the tube there it's now focused and the good thing is this little setup here makes a handy little imaging scope so now we've got a live focused image there and you can see there it's quite impressive it's and it's a it's, it's quite a a wide field of view making it very appealing towards the guys who want to take big bigger deep sky objects so again that's really impressive and again I can take live video of that or again if I set my camera to manual mode so it's on manual mode if I set my ISO now we don't need a lot of ISO because we've got a lot of light but if I was going to use this as a, an imaging scope I set it, if I was going to take out deep, deep sky objects I set my ISO between 800 to 1600 ISO but for, for the time being it's only set at ISO 400 and then using my exposure if I put onto live view okay it's blurted out so I then lower my exposure time 
and it's already re it's really bright and I have to lower it all the way down and as you can see to a manageable level at ISO 400 I'm already at four thousandths of a second which shows how fast those optics are so you can imagine uh, how much uh, exposure time you're going to need through this uh, little setup and you'll be taking some really good pictures with that 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 fast f ratio now f ratio is very important the lower that f ratio faster the optics are going to be so in other words you can capture some amazing deep sky objects in literally seconds so in other words 20 to 30 seconds you're going to get some awesome shots of say like uh, the great orion nebula or the andromeda galaxy or the dumbbell nebula you can get some really good pictures for a little setup like that so again I'm using this setup there. I've just just proved to you guys and girls that this modification works. And as I always recommend in all my video guys, I never undertake a modification if I know it's not going to work. So again, this modification works and as you can see, you can take pictures willy-nilly. I can just take one now, take the shot. Okay, that's taken my shot of the landscape. It works. And that's the main thing. So please, if you're interested in doing this, try it out. Try it out for yourself. And uh, you'll be quite impressed with it. So there you go. Another quick way to use this, uh, to use this finder scope as a main imaging scope. So again, I found out three uses already for this high quality equipment. So again, you can use it as a finding scope, a guide scope, or a main imaging scope. It's well worth it. And I actually use this quite a lot now. Because it's lightweight, it's portable, and you can be imaging the night sky in no time with a tiny little finding scope like this. And end of the day, it's still a telescope. Just because it's small, it's going to do exactly the same job. And for people who are on a limited budget and don't have a lot of money, this is probably one of the ways you can get round it. And again, because of the fast optics, you can mount this on a, a camera tripod. You can take great pictures of the moon or the, or, or the planets to a, a reasonable level with a DSLR camera or a webcam. So again, you can take some really good pictures. Or... If you could take long exposure and have this set up on equatorial mount, you could take longer exposures and you can get some amazing wide field pictures of deep sky objects and all that. And it's fantastic little scope. My final conclusion to this product is, would I recommend buying it? Yes, I would. Because of the high quality engineering optics on there, good quality um, material like good solid aluminium machined solid aluminium is being used, high quality glass without a doubt, I would buy this as a really good finder scope. And being very good quality means that I could use it as a guide scope and I can also and I proved that I can use it as an imaging scope and yes I would recommend buying the setup however it's up to you personally on what you want to buy with the setup you either want a 50 millimeter or a 60 millimeter or an 80 millimeter and the attachments are different all right but if you want to use it as a guide scope, then I recommend that you just buy the setup as a guide scope for setup. But personally, I would get this setup, the £129 setup, because you have the reticle eyepiece, which is a must. And the good thing about the reticle eyepiece is you can use it on any telescope. Okay, you can fit that on there and use it as an aiming device there. The bad thing is that I don't particularly like. Find the scope 
is that they could have invested better dust caps because the one thing I found out the dust caps come off really easy on this one okay so I don't particularly like uh, the dust caps on there and they could have had some mounting screws that so you can mount uh, your screws on there to attach it onto your main tube of your telescope so I would like to have seen that but other than that everything else is spot on uh, and it is a really good package and for what you get for 129 pounds it's well worth it and again please check the link out through uh, Tring Astronomy they're really good retailers they also sell uh, this product at a good price uh, or you can go directly to Alto Astro okay and visit uh, their website and again Telescope service also deal with L2 Astro products as well and again visit them So I hope this video guides gives you some really good ideas uh, And please undertake that modification. I think it's well worth it and as you can see with the images It is fantastic low scope if you compare with the uh, the chromatic aber aberration on there It's not to it's not to worry you got a good little setup and within budget and the good thing about having a, a small portable uh, imaging scope is that you're not going to demand a heavy duty tripod you can mount this on a very lightweight equatorial mount if you want to take long exposures or a lightweight camera mount if you want to take some good pictures of the moon this camera will give you uh, this finder scope will give you good views of the moon so again Overall, a fantastic little package. I highly recommend it. And again, please feel free to comment on this video and uh, please join our Facebook group, Astronomy for Beginners. We're also available on this link here. And also, please subscribe onto my channel if you want to keep up, be updated on the latest uh, product reviews or on the uh, any hints and tips or any astronomy advice uh, particularly with modifications of telescopes and, and so forth then please subscribe onto my channel and um, so you can get updated on the latest videos that come out so again thanks for watching and clear skies to you all